Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. Y'all, let's have some more stocking stuffer fun. Stay tuned. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am thrilled to have all of you watching this video and I really am grateful for the time that you spend on my channel and for the wonderful way that you support me. It is truly, truly appreciated. And for those of you who haven't yet committed to subscribing, go ahead. I would love to have you join. We're doing some amazing things on the channel and you're about to see another amazing quick stocking stuffer. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notification bell so that you will know when I upload a new video. And today guys, we are still doing stocking stuffers and we are going to do something oh so simple and cute. And I'm also going to go back to my roots in this video. And by going back to my roots, I am going to go back to my roots on how I made the bag for this particular project. So I am going to just undo this so that you can see what we're going to be making. And of course we have our own little custom packaging for it. But what it is, is simply a book of crossword puzzles. Now you guys have seen me cover these before, but when I covered them before, I removed the cover completely. Today we're not going to do that. Today we're going to simplify it even more by covering the outside as I have done here and then we're going to make a little holder for the pencil because I don't know about you but whenever I'm doing a crossword puzzle I'm not ever that confident that I'm going to not need to erase so I always use a pencil so I am going to be doing a pencil holder on this and then like I said we are going to make our own custom packaging for this awesome stocking stuffer. Now I got these from the Dollar Tree, but you can find books like this anywhere. Doesn't matter the country that you're in. I'm pretty sure they probably have some type of crossword book or puzzle book that you can take and then modify. So this is what we're going to be making today. I am not going to be giving exact measurements because the measurements will depend on the actual size of the book that you're using. And even between the books here, some of them were off by a quarter of an inch. So you need to measure in order to make sure you're getting the right dimensions for your book. But I'm going to show you that process and then you'll know exactly how I created this from this. But this time I'm going to be using this puzzle book. So the first thing that I did was I determined how long it is and this is eight inches then I determined how wide it is, and this is five and a quarter inches. So I cut everything exact. And by exact, I mean lengthwise, I cut everything at eight inches. So what I'm doing for my spine, my width is two and a half, and then your length will be whatever the length of your book is. So mine is two and a half by eight. I have already placed tape on the back. So I'm going to lift off my tape. Then I'm going to take this and I am going to place it so that I have the top even. It's easier to do this when I'm not doing it on camera. And then I'll bring it down to the bottom. Then I'm just going to take it and wrap it around that spine. Use my big old spatula just to make sure I have that spine stuck. And then I'll just bring the rest around to the back. So that is how you do the spine. And while I'm doing this part, I'm going to go ahead and answer the question of the day at this point because I get a lot of this particular question and it is how do I make my paper selections? How do I know 
how to match up. So what I usually do guys is I will have an idea of the papers that I want to use on a project. And for me, as long as I'm breaking up my patterns and I am transitioning from let's say words to flowers and I have a piece in between to kind of separate that, then it's going to work. What I wouldn't do on this particular project here is I would not use flowers here because then the flowers would compete with this and I would not use solid black here because that's also going to compete with that. So when I am looking to match up my papers, I basically will lay them out to see what is the best effect that I'm going to get when I am making this project. And I like how I'm transitioning here from the words that are light and dark to this border strip that's pink and then it all flows and ties in here because I've got my blacks, I have my pinks, and I have my lighter colors. So really what I'm doing when I am choosing papers, I always start with papers that I personally like. And if I'm making a project for someone else, I try to pick out what I know they normally veer towards. But then I like to mix my patterns and I like to make sure that I have a variety so, so that it's not boring and bland, but it's not so busy and in your face either. So really go with what you like, but this is my focal piece here. So everything else that I'm doing with this, I want it to complement the focal piece and not take away from it. So all of this complements and it doesn't take away from the fact that the flower page of this is where I want the eyes focus to be. And I'll be talking a little bit more about paper in the future, how I purchase it, what I'm looking for when I purchase it, and then how I use it. So hopefully that helped. So now that I have my spine down, I am going to go ahead and place down my focal piece. And because the spine covers a portion of this, we know that this is five and a quarter inches wide, I am only going to use a four and a quarter by eight inch piece. So when you are doing yours, I can't give you exact measurements, but as long as you have a one inch spine here, then you can reduce this piece by approximately one inch so that you can have this showing. So this is one inch, this is five and a quarter inches all the way across. So now I'm going to add my four and a quarter inch piece. Hopefully what I'm saying is making sense because sometimes when I'm saying it, it makes sense to me, but it might not always make sense to you guys. So if it's not, let me know. So I am going to take this piece and when I place it down, I'm not going to place it from this end. I'm going to place it from the edge here. So I am going to take this, get it lined up at the top and with the edge, and then I'll just feed it down just like that. And I could actually leave this as is if I want it because I think that's pretty just like that. But I am going to add that little border strip there just to kind of break it up. And this border strip is a quarter of an inch wide. So when you do your border strip and if you want to follow my measurements on width, then your border strip will be a quarter of an inch wide and it will be as long as the book that you're using. So when I place it down, I'm placing it down so that it overlaps both pieces. And now I can see that I have just a tiny bit of overhang and I'm just going to trim that off. And don't you guys think that that looks pretty doggone cute. So I'm going to flip it over and repeat the process. So I am going to lift up my tape from my piece that measures four and a quarter by eight. And then I'll take my book. So when I place it down, I'm going to make sure that I line it up in the top corner and at the top. And then I can just feed it towards the bottom just like that. 
and then I'll check it to see if I have any overhang. I don't. And so now guys, we have our sweet little puzzle book all ready to go. So now that we have this part of our book done, we are going to go ahead and make our pencil holder. And it's going to be easy peasy. When you're cutting out your spine piece, you're going to have some scrap. And I am just going to take a scrap piece and however long you want it is up to you. But I am going to double this over because I do want that thickness. So I am going to use my glue and just place my glue on the inside. And then we're going to get this nice and stuck. Okay, so then I have these pencils that I also got from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to find one that I like. And I had a comment asking about the Dollar Tree and the fact that you know, you can't find it overseas. And I am in the US, so the stores that I am going to purchase from will be US-based stores. And basically what I'm doing is giving ideas and hopefully you can take the idea and transfer that to what you're able to find in your geographical region because I don't know where everyone is located and I certainly don't know the stores in everyone's area. So hopefully you can find something that is comparable to what I'm using. And I am going to go with this lighter pencil because I don't want the darkness of that one on. So the way that I'm going to do this is I am going to take my piece. And like I said, the size of this piece is totally up to you. But I am going to take my piece, go ahead and grab my pencil so I can get positioning. And then I'm just going to press it in like that. So I am going to take this side, place it right there, put my pencil back in just to make sure I have good placement. Then I'm going to take my big old spatula and just get that nice and stuck. Then I'm going to take my pencil, put it back in, take this side, And I think what I'm going to do is just trim a little bit off of this because I don't like how wide it is. I'm going to trim just a little bit away. So I'm going to take my pencil, put it back in, and I am going to use my spatula just to press against that pencil to really get the tightest fit that I can get. And then I'm going to take my glue place my glue on that piece and then I'll get it stuck down and if you guys hear any noise in the background I have Loki in here with me today and she doesn't know how to be quiet yet so y'all might hear her playing in the background so once I have it stuck I am simply going to take my spatula and move my paper in as tight as I can get it because I want to make sure that I am going to have a very snug fit on that pencil because we want this pencil to stay. So I am just again going over this, getting everything nice and tight, nice and stuck. And now I can pick my book up and my pencil's not going anywhere. So then I have these really old gems, but they will do perfectly to give me the look of Brad. So I am just going to take a couple off. I put down some glue. And on each side, I am going to add two because that gives me the look of having brads on here. So I am going to add two right dots of glue right there. Take two of my little gems. Take my take my gem, place it down, and then I'll take my and then I'll take my last one 
and I'm going to place it right there. Now, my gems do have an adhesive back, but I'm adding reptile glue because I want to make sure that the gems do not come undone. So now we have our gorgeous, gorgeous puzzle book number two. Easy peasy to make. And for the puzzle lover, guys, this is a wonderful, wonderful stocking stuffer. So now that we have made the book, let's make the bag. And, and remember when I said I was going to go back to my roots on making a bag? Well, I am. Before scoreboards, this is the process that I used to follow when I needed to make a bag. So I would always cut out some paper. And in this case, I'm just going to work with a 12 by 12 square. And I am going to just fold up the bottom. And I'm coming up about an inch. You can put it in your scoreboard if you want. But I am just going to do it the way that I used to do it. And then I'm going to take my top and make it just a little bit wider than that bottom. And so the wide part is going to be my top. The smaller part is going to be the bottom. Now I'm going to take my book, bring my book in, place it down just like this, and I'm going to fold over just like this. Almost like you're wrapping a gift. But what I'm wanting to do is just get my creases going and I am going to just press down until I have my creases. And then I'm going to use my finger blade just to cut down on that crease. And I am going to remove all four corner pieces. So go up to the score mark, drag down, and then cut straight across. And then what I'm going to do here is I am going to angle in just a little, not a whole lot, just a little bit. Then I'll rotate it to the top and I'm going to repeat that process. So I wanna get that just a little bit tighter. So I'm going to go up, drag straight down and remove this piece. Then I'm going to angle this in just a little bit, come over to this side, drag straight down Remove that piece, and then I'll angle in. So that wider piece is my top. Here is the bottom. I am going to take my book and place it back in because I want to make sure that I have it in before I start gluing this together. So I am just going to take just a little bit of glue and I'm going to run a bead of glue along the end here and only this end. So then I'll fold that over, getting the tops matched and I'm not going to have it too, too snug, but snug enough so that it's going to hold that book and this really is like wrapping a gift, but we're just making a very inexpensive little bag here. I'm going to take the book out now. And now I can take this piece and bend it up and glue it down. But I can see that I've got just a little bit of overhang there. So I am going to just come in and trim that out. So now I can take my glue, place my glue on this bottom flap. We can fold it up just like that. And all we're doing, guys, is creating a very rustic, rustic bag to hold our little stocking stuffer because you really don't need any more than this because it is a stocking stuffer. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I'm not using the true score marks on the side. 
if I was, I would have to join two pieces of paper in order to be able to cover this book. So by doing it this way, I am basically just getting around the need of joining paper. If you want to join paper and score and create that box, you can, but this process works too when you need a bag in a hurry. So I am going to close this using Velcro and I have taken a Velcro dot and basically just cut it in half and that's what I'm going to use to close this. Now you could close it permanently with glue because it is really, truly a one and done bag. So I am just going to lift up that plastic cover. Then I'll take this and just fold it over just like this. And now we have a sweet little bag that is made to hold that book with the pencil. So I am going to try to remove this without pulling up my Velcro because y'all know how Velcro is sometimes. It, kind of finicky on when it will stick and when it won't. So I took the book out because I want to add a few stickers just to dress up this bag. So this time I am going to take, no, I think I'm gonna stick with these red stickers here. So I am going to put the red sticker right there at the bottom, trim off that excess and we can get that stuck. Then I'm going to come back to my sticker sheet. I think I'm going to choose this Christmas tree. Place the Christmas tree right there at the bottom. And then I'm going to choose the word Jolly and place Jolly right here in the middle. So we have created just a cute little bag to hold our puzzle book. And it really is that simple. Doesn't take a whole lot to do this and you can turn out something really amazing. So I am going to bring that first one back in. We'll take, we'll take the second one out. And now y'all get to see how gorgeous these little books in their custom old school bags are. So the next time you're in the store and you see some puzzle books, pick some up. Doesn't matter if they're small, tall, fat, short, whatever it is, pick some up and use this process to cover them because they make great stocking stuffers, but they also make great anytime gifts. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys, be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.